it's time to look at the reactions of alcohol. So in other words, what do alcohols do? Well, probably the most obvious thing to begin with is to look at the fact that they burn. Alcohols can be used as a fuel. In certain parts of the world, alcohol is mixed with petrol, which is a fuel called gasohol, a mixture of alcohol and gasoline, as it's sometimes called. This is uh, commonly done in Brazil, where they can grow large amounts of sugar, fermented sugar, and produce cheap alcohol. If we take ethanol as our alcohol, with the formula C2H5OH, can we write an equation for it burning? Well, of course, when it burns, it joins with oxygen. When a compound containing carbon burns, we'll assume it produces carbon dioxide. The carbon joins with oxygen. When the hydrogen burns, it will produce water. Can we balance this equation? If we begin, begin with two carbons, we end with two carbons. If we begin with a total of six hydrogens, we end up with a total of six hydrogens. But be careful. There's a total of four oxygens in there, a total of three oxygens there, in other words, a grand total of seven oxygens on the right hand side. But there's one of them. We have to have begin with seven. There's one, that leaves six oxygens, which means if I put a three in there, we have six oxygens plus one is seven. We balance the equation. Let's see what else alcohols can do. Well, an important reaction of alcohols is dehydration. You might recall we said that alcohols can be made by hydration. You might remember we said that if you take an al if you take an alkene and you add water to it, you can make an alcohol. The water adds on in this kind of way. Well. Possibly the reaction is reversible. If we could remove water, that would mean that we could make alkenes. Maybe begs the question, who would want to do that? But you must remember, alkenes are an important source of monomers for making plastics. So let's take an example of a dehydration reaction. We have the same problem as we had with hydration. Sometimes there's more than one outcome. Let's look at an example where there is more than one possibility. If I was to take the likes of this alcohol with its four carbons and the OH group, it's butanol. To be more accurate, butan-2-ol, because the OH group is on the second carbon. So if I was to take butan-2-ol and to dehydrate it, what would I get? Well, let's have a look and see. There are two possibilities. Since we're removing water, we must be removing this oxygen. Water is H2O, we have to remove two hydrogens and an oxygen. But there are two possibilities. Either we can remove those two H's and O, or those two H's and O. If we remove the water from this position, then that's where the double bond will end up. But if we remove the water from this position, then of course the double bond will end up in a different location. We have two products. They're both alkenes. They're isomers that have the same overall formula, but they have different structures. This one, with its four carbons, is based on butane, double bond. Butene, where's the double bond? On carbon atom number one. But one in. This one, but two. As I say, they are isomers. One thing which I didn't mention was how is this actually achieved? How can you remove water? You must remember that the chemical which is able to remove water is aluminium oxide. Aluminium oxide is a compound you're expected to know as the ability to remove water. Something described as a dehydrating agent that effectively dries out the alcohol. What else can we use alcohols for? Another reaction. Well, they can be used to make esters. Very briefly, because we'll need to look at this at a later date, an ester 
is a compound made from two reactants. One of the reactants is a carboxylic acid, and the other one, of course, is an alcohol. You cannot have an ester without an alcohol. We'll come to that later. And finally, and most importantly, the big reaction of alcohols that dominates this corner of the higher force is oxidation. And that is something we'll look at next.